Hi, I'm Safi. And I'm Laura. And, and together, together we're the Rambling Bookshelf. This week we're looking at The Power by Naomi Alderman. The Power is a fictional novel that focuses on women gaining an electrical superpower that gives them superiority over men. It follows four different characters in separate chapters as they explore this new world with a new superpower. So we chose The Power um, because I just studied it at uni and I loved it. Um, I thought Seth would really, really like it because she's a huge Margaret Atwood fan. Massive. And <laughs> Naomi Alderman um, is like a, not like a student, but like she worked, she worked with Margaret Atwood as she wrote this novel, so I thought Seth would love it. I did enjoy the book. Um, it wasn't my favourite. I did have a few gripes with it, as we have yeah. sort of discussed. Um, but yeah, overall, I did enjoy it. Yeah, I really, really liked it. When I read it, I was like, okay, new favourite book. Yeah. Like, 100%. Gonna recommend it to everybody. Yeah. I love it. Um, there are a few bits where I'm like, uh, But for the most part, big fan. Yeah. I no, I agree with that. So what was it about the power that you liked so much? I just really liked how relevant it seemed. And while at uni, I became kind of a bit of a feminist, which I'm a bit proud of. Not because, thing. Yeah. Realised that, you know, we're pretty much all feminists. We just don't realise that we are. Yeah. Um, so this book, I think, really kind of, I don't know, it set fire to the inner feminist. Yeah. No. I'm yeah. Really and like, that. just kind of the main things, like, when there's a rape scene and it's switched around and it's like a woman raping a man, mm. for, like, those really kind of sexist men out there, I think it'd be really insightful. I was going to say, I feel like that bit was specifically written almost for a man to read. Yeah. To realise the kind of brutality of what rape actually exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, like, there's just moments like that throughout and, like, glimpses where you think there's, there's like, this crazy, crazy moment where, like, oh, like, these poor men don't have any power. And you realise that all of these kind of poignant moments are a reflection of an actual moment that happens day to day yeah, for women. Yeah. Yeah, sure. so I think that was the main thing for me that I, every, like it was every couple of chapters I would just be like, oh, it was and very, very current, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah. The time so, it was written, I think. yeah, I think that was the main thing, just kind of the force and the power within it, if I may. Yeah. yeah. But what were your few issues with the book? Okay, so my main one would be that I think Alderman writes with quite a narrow focus in the sense that she writes that all women would be affected by the power in exactly the same way, and that if women did become superior, that the world would be essentially exactly the same. So yeah. That's kind of... Yeah, like the chaos... Spoiler, kind of that's kind of the outcome. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but with the gender switch. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I felt that it didn't really focus on the way power is actually kind of distributed. Like, there's nothing about race or class, yeah. because her daughter, or her daughters, Margot's daughters, yeah. um, go to a kind of military, almost training camp to encourage this power use, um, but obviously there are girls that have been sex trafficked yeah. and things in other countries, and so yeah. would the dynamic necessarily be the same, like would those girls even be allowed to, would it get that they were able to use their power in any way? Yeah, yeah, would they still be oppressed, basically? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, I think there are moments when you're like, oh, okay, like, that's fine. But the main point where you say, would it be the exact same outcome, but with, a, like, the gender yeah. switch, like, I agree with that. I didn't know if maybe she'd actually written it for that to be almost the point. Yeah, yeah. Like, that the world wouldn't necessarily be any better. Yeah. But I don't think that's necessarily yeah. the case, because she seems like quite a feminist yeah. herself. And I think also, um, like going off that, like maybe, like you say, the point is that if women had all of the power, like then everything would just be as chaotic. But maybe kind of balancing that power between genders, and as soon as one has a physical, like advantage over the other, it just that, escalates. Exactly. Yeah. Like it shouldn't be based on a physical advantage. That was the other. also my problem with it. Um, I felt that it was not almost subtle enough. I yeah. didn't like that women had to have a physical superpower for them to actually become superior. Yeah. That was an issue for me. Yeah, but, that's um, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like someone like Margaret Atwood maybe would have written that more subtly. Yeah, you're know. probably right. But, yeah. But I do feel like it is, I like, I like that it's so in your face for those, 
people that would read it and wouldn't immediately see the reflection in today's society. For sure. I think it is quite important that there's like that bang, like this is what's happening. Yeah. They have this one thing and then it's it's kicking off because of this one little difference. And yeah, as that kind of power shifts over, people just go completely crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and the world goes to crap, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very interesting take on it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I love the kind of idea of it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think kind of plot wise, that was my main gripe with it. Yeah. And then my other issues were sort of more just nitty gritty. Like, what did you think to Roxy? She really bothered me as yeah. a character, I'll be <laughs> honest. Um, I think when I was reading it, it made me think that Alderman was actually American and had never met a British person. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then I was very surprised to find out she is British. Oh, she is? She I is. Didn't actually know yeah, that. she's British. Um, oh, wow. Which did surprise me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like. Yeah, Roxy it was a very was... Americanized take on a British person. Yeah, it was like she was like this mobster geezer. And yeah. I was just like, that's not how any <laughs> English person really is, to be honest. Not. Where were you? What do you oh, mean? We're all ga gangsters. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I had a problem with her. Um, yeah. I thought she was the weakest character. Yeah. Um, and again, there's a character called Ali slash Eve. Spoilers. Um, spoilers. Um, and her story, I thought, started out really, really strong. Yeah. And I was excited to see where that went. But it sort of just fizzled down. So what did you think to kind of the biblical aspect? Um, I liked it, but it sort of fed into this idea I had about the whole power itself anyway, and it being like an impossibility, yeah. almost, that it'd have to be this God-given, yeah. almost, power for women, for to, women to ever be superior. <sighs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, I'm with you on that. Yeah? Yeah. I totally yeah. agree, actually. Yeah, like why, yeah, it kind of wraps around to your, your point in the beginning. Like, yeah. Why do women need a superpower power to be superior in any sense? Mm. Um, yeah. I also like that they took kind of one of the world's most known texts, like the world's most known texts, let's be honest, um, and then kind of adapted it for women. For sure. So I liked that, but yeah, again, like, does it have to be like a superpower? Within the novel itself. Yeah. Tunde, who's, um, so he's like this 21 year old journalist guy who is reporting on women having the power. Um, he collects a load of data and information and recordings and sends them home to his girlfriend, I think Oh it is. yeah. And then she publishes them under his yes. name. And I was like, yes, that's happened to so many women. Yeah. And in like, I think Mer that happened to Mary Shelley, when I think it was oh, Byron. Okay. Um, started to kind of claim responsibility or they thought that it was Byron that wrote it. Oh. I don't know how factually correct this is, but I watched Mary Shelley's Frankenstein thing. It was a film <laughs> or a TV show that I watched about it. It was a reliable source. It was a reasonably reliable source. It was a film. Um, <laughs> all films are factually correct. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so it was really insightful that Tunde's work had been published by a woman and that the man had been kind of forgotten in all of this and all of his kind of trials and tribulations to find out all of this information and then it's taken away from him just like that and it's like women have that problem um and she's so condescending yeah. in the letters isn't she yeah. and oh no so then also then outside of the novel itself then the novel itself is kind of presented as a historical oh. artifact and then that is presented to an author which is naomi right yes and then, so the artifact is written by a man, sent to Naomi, who's the woman. So it's kind of this weird layered thing. So the text is sent to Naomi and Naomi says, this is brilliant, but have you considered publishing it under a woman's name so that it gets more kind of notice and recognition? And then you realize in the, um, afterward at the end, that that is the novel you're reading, is that it is this text that's been written by a man and published under a woman's name and it's just like, yes, like, it's, I just find those bits particularly powerful. That was quite satisfying. Yeah. Um, however, I didn't really click that um, what we were reading was meant to be the historical novel because there are kind of hints at that throughout because yeah. you have the, the artifacts. artifacts and historical drawings, I guess, mm -hmm. throughout 
Um, but yeah. I, oh, that bit for me, I was like, yes! <laughs> I like closed the book and I was like, well done, and put that yeah. down and phoned my friend immediately. Yeah, no, yeah, it was very good. That was this part where Tunde and Roxy are in a tree and they're trapped there and there's all these people hunting for them and they're gonna kill them basically, like it's an invasion and yeah. it's a whole load of politics and armies and all that jazz. Um, so they try to save themselves by grabbing some batteries out of the camera or something yeah. and throwing them at this barrel to like move the... Distract. Yeah, the distract soldiers, the soldiers. Basically. Yeah, so they um, throw the attention over there so then the soldiers like run over to this tub, like this like barrel thing and there's like a kid in there. Right? Yeah, I think there's two kids. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then they kill them. Well, Do that's the thing. Um, these children are pulled out of the, I think it's like an oil drum. Yeah. Um, they're taken out of it, and Roxy and Tunde kind of see them as they're escaping. And um, I think she writes that maybe they survived didn't yeah and it's just it's quite brutal yeah it's quite brutal it's left to your imagination yeah so yes so um roxy and Tunde's relationship i think um it's quite insightful because because of his awareness of the power and his kind of respect for women who have the power and her removal of the power so she's now a woman who doesn't have the actual power anymore i think it makes their relationship quite equal and i think okay. it's quite a natural kind of Thing to happen okay because of their kind of equality within the story no I can see that what's sure. what's yours I can see you like yeah no I I didn't think about it like yeah. that but now that you've told me I kind of think that's maybe what point of it was yeah however for me um, I felt that it just made it a bit so poppery oh. I thought it was a bit unnecessary yeah um, yeah, I wasn't. I don't think I was entirely committed. No, to their relationship. But it I, was. I. I think what bothered me more about it was that they have their sort of one night stand of shenanigans. Oh yeah, in the train station. Or in the in, like, yeah, bus station yeah. Somewhere. Um, and then they go their separate ways. And then there's a bit at the end, um, where Roxy is talking to her dad, again, despite him having. Uh, yeah, open. yeah, because it was the dad that took the scheme. Is that how we say it? Scheme, scheme, scheme. scheme. I'm not sure. Scheme, scheme. Out of his own daughter. So yes. Roxy and her dad really shouldn't get on. But yeah, there's that ra random bit where she's then talking to her dad. Yeah, she's talking to her dad at the end, and she's like, "Oh, by the way, dad, I met Roy." Yeah. And that was a bit nice. Mm. Yeah. Never see him again, though. Probably not. Yeah. Also, it kind of takes away from that kind of feminism as well. Of yeah. like. Couldn't she have just been an independent woman who, though her power has been removed, she re remains powerful? Yeah. Um, but yeah, as soon as kind of this power is taken away from her, she then almost runs into the arms of a man, and, and yeah. then it's all fixed, and they survive, and yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a, bit of a niggle for me. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. Like, yeah. there are parts of it that I'm like, okay, I see why we did this. I like that you talked about that. Naomi and I, yeah. who wrote this together. I like this. <laughs> <My> best um, friends. <coughs> but, yeah, I think that you've mentioned that dynamic yeah. that has made me think about it a little bit differently. Yeah. See you next week for another ramble. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment down below on your views on the power. Cool. Happy? Yeah. Smash that, look at that!